woman or a woman who looked European. So she felt like, well, if I can't beat him, I might as well join him. And that's how she says she I, she admits to having body image issues and low mm-hmm. self-esteem. But she attributes it to that. And then so uh, Carmen says, get a black hairdresser. Absolutely. Keep the money in, in the, the black, black community. community. And Marcus, I really believe in one of our greatest problems is we don't know how to unite. We yeah. don't know the definition of a movement because many seem to think we're in one um, right. We're, we're in one right now when it's just loud. Uh, let's see. It's just loud conversation leading to nowhere. Yeah. We don't know how to leave when we have places to go. And it doesn't always have to wind up being Africa. But there are some better places than this hellhole. We don't know mm. how to move ourselves forward. And there is no blueprint that is being created to help that. Um, yeah, I would disagree I like with the blueprint. There like is a that. blueprint. Uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with Dr. Claude Anderson, he lays out a blueprint, uh, five levels or five points or five issues or things that we can do in order to move the ball forward. It's not that hard. He says that we need to build and create black businesses. We need to um, get more involved in politics. We need to also uh, get more involved in own and control, rather, own and control um, politics, own and control the police and court um, courts. Own and control the media and education. Though all we can't do, we can't build and grow without doing those things in that order. And so there is a blueprint, but a lot of us, if I like right now, I say Dr. Claude Anderson. Who? How many of huh? exactly? But, hey, how many people are going to actually go look up his program called Powernomics? I also know that Minister Louis Farrakhan has a blueprint where he talks about farming and. Buying land and cultivating the land. So, uh, nigga, you crazy. Um, nigga, you crazy. Marcus Gar- Ooh, you Mar- crazy. Marcus Garvey also had a blueprint. So there's plenty of blueprints out there. It's just that we're not following that. You you crazy. The white man's ice cube is colder than ours. Is so it, it, it is. Okay. because I have to try that one out. Yeah, you, know, you have to try okay. it out. You know, because like I said, you, you, you hit it right on the nail, what you just said. I mean, I'm just telling y'all what I know. I could be wrong. No, no, but you know, even, yeah. but even if you are wrong, how many of us are going to go and research what you right. just said? Right. So, no. and then uh, uh, Carmen says, "Gotcha." And, um, Cindy says, "What's up, Jonelle?" And mm-hmm. Al says, "If black women spend so much money on hair, men spend a lot of money on shoes, rims, and weed. Yeah, we misappropriate our money. But if you're going to do that, spend it with black people. Right. If you're going right. to buy some rims, spend it with black people. Right. Um." You know, and Al brought up a good point. Um, I, I told you this earlier this week when I went out, and I go out in the community and I kind of videotape things and, mm-hmm. and, and show things. And I'm, I'm going to give a good example. Uh, what uh, Last weekend I had my nephew. I'll show you guys a Donovan yeah. once again. Yeah, last week. Don't, don't get scared. Uh, last week I had my nephew with me, and I took him up to the state park. Mm-hmm. Now, we as black people, we are the biggest, one of the biggest consumers in the United We are the biggest mm-hmm. consumers in the United States. And we pay all of these taxes. When you buy stuff, you're paying tax on right. it. Right. We went up to the Lake Paris, which is about three miles away away from uh, where we're at right now. And I must have saw two black people at the lake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You know we don't like water. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't even that. I mean, you know, because, you know, you got the, the Mexicans were up there barbecuing. The white yeah. folks are, are enjoying their boats or mm-hmm. whatever it is. What I'm saying is. You know, we have all these things that we pay for and we don't utilize and we don't teach our kids to utilize it. So when Al said something about how uh, boys are into shoes and doing like that, think about this. And it shows you how crazy this is. When did that start? That started from our generation teaching these boys because before boys didn't really do that. Right. Because they were, you know, in shop or doing, you know, getting their cars like that. They're learning this from the mother. And, I, and I, again, oh, no, no. And I'm not trying to bash mom. But what I'm okay. saying is it's a phenomenon that has started from our generation on down. OK. And now what is it going to take to fix it? I don't know. OK. Well. Well, I, mean, I do know, but nobody wants to hear it. Right. Well, I mean, as, I don't know if I would blame black women. I didn't say blame. I, no, 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 no. I'm just saying. Yeah, I didn't say blame. Or, I'm, or, I'm, or, I'm explaining why this is starting to happen. There, that phenomena is being taught. And you know, I, I saw it in the military. I saw these young men that were feminized and could not keep their mouths closed. They wanted the last word. You just saw the, the woman traits okay, in there. I, I mean, let's just say that is true that, that came from women. Mm-hmm. Where the hell are they daddies at? No, exactly. Okay. No, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. But that, that goes back, back to my point. We right. have to come together. In some way, some fashion, and stop all this, or it's going to continue. Boys before did not really care about shoes and clothes like that. You you had some nice clothes, but it wasn't yeah. like 
you know, our roles were different, basically. We're, we're looking for acceptance is what it is. Yeah. And Jonelle says, we're, we lost in false in, in, inclusion. Mm-hmm. Our ignorance in all manner of white lies as a people. Our salvation is in facing and knowing the truth as we, as well as our self-love and unity. We all uh, need, all we need, I'm sorry, is those willing to, let's see, let's see. Uh, those willing to do for self and organize. We must be doers. It only takes the willing. The future belongs to the doers of the world. Now, absolutely. My dad always says, God bless the child that has his, his own. own. And so when we start doing for self, then, I mean, the rest is going to be easy, but we can't keep giving away everything we have mm-hmm. and then say, oh my gosh, we don't have nothing. No duh. No duh. Really? Right. And then, Carmen says, you remind me so much of your mom. She would be so proud seeing you in this struggle. Uh, that's my, uh, that's my yeah. mom's um, best friend, best by friend. the way. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm waiting for you to be like your mom and write that book. Uh, you know what? My mom's always telling me, you need to write a book. Writing is not, a book is not something I want to do. Okay, well. Maybe I can, I can when I strike it big. I could just sit and talk, and somebody else. Okay. Try to... Okay. Well. Well. Like a ramble. Well. Well. One thing. <laughs> well. One thing. Tell your mom's best friend I'm going to publish that song. Yeah, yeah. Deanna's going to kick your butt. <laughs> and O says, Donovan, do you believe that we need to separate? If so, explain. If not, explain. Uh, I do believe we need to separate because I'm going to turn that toward for, Donovan. For, for 60 years, what we've been doing it has not been working for us. We were separate before. Now we have to get back into doing that. And I think that by relying on ourselves and showing the next generation and the other generations that you can do what this guy is doing and what these other countries are doing. If they can do it, there's no reason why we can't do So you do believe it. that we do need to separate? We do. Okay. We do. We do. Because okay. we, we are in a condition so sick that it, it's, it's detrimental to our culture. Okay. So the answer was yes. All right. Absolutely. And I, I believe the same thing. Okay. Mm. And then uh, Carmen says, because it doesn't affect them directly. No, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then Jonelle says, not all snakes are bad or have poison. True. But um, are you going to gamble with your life or be intelligent in your dealings as well as aware of whom you're dealing with? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're not going to say, well, you're a rattlesnake. You're a rattlesnake, too. <laughs> but I think you're a good rattlesnake. Hey, let me go on and step on over there. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you just gonna be like, listen, y'all all rattlesnakes. I'm just saying. Uh, but good analogy, thank you. And then Cindy says, Hey, I was just speaking about Donovan's comments about the side chick. Firm believe one woman, uh, two, five children, no support payments. I am cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know I knew what yeah. you were talking about, but mm-hmm. yeah, we need um just to, just to be faithful. I mean, and if you out there creeping Protect yourself. I mean, right. there's enough uh, kids uh, running around the planet that don't have a full commitment from both parents. And those are the things that we're not thinking of more. Be, not we. Well, maybe you because, you know, you got a lot of side chicks out there. And stuff. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, well, that's the kind of stuff we need to think about when we're, when we're doing those things. You and, know? you know, and, and, I, and, and when it comes to things like that, I put more emphasis on the man. Because he should know better, knowing that he already has a family. Absolutely. Because what you're now doing is taking food out of your uh, married family right. to support another And giving entity. a lot of fodder for these uh, these court television yeah. shows. Well, that, Where would you be without them? Well, that, and, and you got, and you got <laughs> to think about it. Let me show you how evil these people are. Mm-hmm. They have created a whole industry to where the court systems now make money off us going to jail or just being in the family court system. Right. Oh, and we love Bill Clinton, and he was the one that started all that. Because before, they weren't taking brothers you to jail. talk about the first black Sorry. president. Sorry. What's wrong with you? Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. And so Al says, my stepdad and his side piece are so broke, if someone robs them, they would just be practicing. Alex, <laughs> oh, wow. You say, divide and conquer. The great dividers are racism, classism, religion, and yes. politics. Go ahead, young brother. Yes. And Charles says, system of white supremacy is alive and well. I forgot who said the moderate indifferent... White person is America, or the ones who are quiet during um, injustice is um, a vote or okay for injustice. Let's see, systematic racism. Yeah, I mean, that's the question. Again, like I, I said, I had a conversation with somebody who was, you know, trying to make the difference between good white people and bad white people. But either way, if you're good and you don't say anything or try to use your voice, mm-hmm. then. What, uh, how good can you really be? That's like me watching somebody get the crap beat out of them across the street, and I'm like, that's Word star. horrible. Yeah. That's so bad. First thing you do is grab your cell phone. Where's my Starbucks? Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 
I could be a good person, but am I good if I'm just watching Injustice? Probably not. Probably not. You know? And it says, Dr. Anderson, who is now with Dr. Watkins. Yes, I've noticed that they have um, joined together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Dr. Watkins. He obviously got in some hot water lately. Um, I don't know exactly how... I don't really know if he was trying to be underhanded and all of that. But yes, they have joined forces. I love Dr. Claude Anderson. It's unfortunate that a lot of us don't know about him or even follow him or his uh, Powernomics um, program. We should be doing that. It's not hard to follow, but we want to uh, go every which way, but you know where we're supposed. But um, other than where we're supposed to go, Alex says, "Has any black person ever opened a black vegan restaurant?" Someone needs to have not. I know in Houston when I was out there, they have one called uh, Green Seed Vegan. And that's, yeah, there's quite a few uh, black vegan restaurants. There's, I don't think there's any here. Um, where, oh, Back to the Grind has a lot of um, vegan, sure. um, <clears throat> and they're black owned. But yeah, we do. Um, we, we do need to open up. And I say that all the time, but black vegan restaurant. It ain't going to be me because I don't like to cook on a large scale. Yeah, and then, you know, with all the regulations, it's just hard to, you know, mm -hmm. when you're not, when your heart's not into it. Right. You know, so. uh, yeah. And then uh, Charles says, great point on that blueprint, Dr. Claude Anderson. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, the blueprints are out there. They're out there. We just need to do mm -hmm. the work, research. I mean, it's, and, the, and the crazy part about it, you can go on YouTube and get m most of that stuff. Yeah. You don't even have to buy the book, which you should, because it puts money in his pocket. Uh, but he has so many seminars and speeches and stuff about powernomics and the five things that we need to do, but we won't follow it. Right, and black people don't read, so. Well, we read, but we don't read as much as we, we should. We should, right. You know, because I do a lot of reading. Right. Uh, and... Uh, but, of course, you're from the old school, literally. You me old? <laughs> yes. Again? Yes. And Charles says, you're right. And then Sydney says, go get those spinning rims, those sarcasm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to buy the spinning rims, right. buy them from, you know, Black. Brother, brother Man and them spinning mm -hmm. rims, you know. Right. I have a friend right now. He's right up the street. His name is Mino. Mm -hmm. The guy is, you know, he's a Hispanic guy, but, you know, he's been down from day one, you know. Opened his own business, you know, with a small loan and did his thing. He This guy makes over a million dollars. But you know why he's able to make a million dollars a year with, with rims? Uh, selling rims because he has a market, a mm -hmm. Hispanic market that understands the power of group right. economics. Exactly, they are going to go to him mm -hmm. before they go to Goodyear, right. or Brother Man Rams and right. Tires. They're going to go and uh, patronize their own, which all is what the you're classic to do. and all the classic uh, car car riders right. go to him and stuff like and that. You're taking your black self in there is just extra money, but he's mm -hmm. already got a market, right? Right. But I'm, what I'm saying is, so, if he can do it, why can't we? Oh, do absolutely. It? Uh, and let's see. And then Cindy says, well, I want to hear uh, Donovan's point. Let's see. Was that on uh, what point about what? I'm sorry. And then uh, Jonelle says, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad established a nation full of businesses with a third grade education, a blueprint, Marcus Garvey, a blueprint, Minister Farrakhan, a blueprint. We're so busy and can't or, oops, can't or cane that we um, ignore Abel. Or uh, okay, our, uh -huh, mm -hmm. our God-given abilities to do for self. None is doing what we are not able to do if we drop our slave mind of dependency and can't. We must build our will to build and do for self. Absolutely. Okay. So as you said, that's what I said um, not too long ago to uh, Marcus's uh, point. All those people that you mentioned, they all have a blueprint. They, they set forth the blueprint. It's like how many, I remember years ago, my mom used to tell me, because I used to listen to, and I still do to some degree, not as much as I used to, a lot of motivational and inspirational affirmations and stuff. And she would say, well, damn, when are you going to take some of that information and actually go do it? Yeah, apply you it. You know, we have all the information. Now we just need to apply the knowledge. You know, that's. Well, do you, it's just like when we first started. Remember when we first started this show? Where, where were we doing the show? Outside in front of a damn Starbucks. Yeah, and a star. Ooh, you sure was doing it at a Starbucks. Look at you. We, we almost got our asses kicked. No, we were outside in <laughs> a Starbucks. But uh, no, we started at a Starbucks, right. remember? Mm -hmm. And then I just said, wait, let's do it. Started getting cold. I said, hey, we got to do something about mm -hmm. this. And I just kept thinking and thinking and thinking. And we built this yeah, up here. Yeah, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you can't have a studio. Right. If you just put your mind, mind to, to it. it. Like Jonell said, and Al says, tell your audience on what happened with me yesterday on how that guy. That I was uh, one of uh, one of his people, and I still got messed over. I'm trying to think what we, what that was. I, uh, it'll come to me. And Sydney says, "Correction, I want to hear 
Donovan's point. Which point is that? Which hey, point? Cynthia. And note to Lil' Kim, Halle Berry was cheated on by a black man and I believe a white man. Obviously, cheating has nothing to do with your looks. Your hair looks marvelous, Misty. Oh, thank you. Absolutely no. You're absolutely right. Some of the finest women on the planet. I mean, hell, Queen B. Her man got an album by cheating on her. She mm-hmm. got an album by being cheated on. This is, you know, so to some people consider the most beautiful and most talented one. I, I know you rolling your eyes, but I'm just saying. <sighs> okay. A woman on the planet, and she couldn't keep her, not that it was her job to keep mm-hmm. him faithful, but he was not faithful to her. So well, that's well it's, a good, it's a good thing that uh, uh, Jigga called me and I said, it's cheaper to keep her, brother. Jigga, <laughs> really? Yeah, I said, don't, don't you go nowhere. <laughs> and Cindy says, I had a debate with a black empress. She said the same thing as Donovan, but I need to hear him elaborate. Okay, you're going to have to remind us of what that was, brother. Mm. And then Al says, the families are not the same. My grandparents knew about everything that was being spent inside our home. Mm-hmm. There were no secrets of money being spent outside home. Now, absolutely. Marcus says, in the um, gun game, there are... The, um, they are the most hunted. The rivers of blood that wash the streets of our nation flow mostly from the bodies of our black children. Yet as the great debate emerges on the question of, uh, let's see, uh, emerges on uh, the question of guns, white America discusses the constitutional issues of ownership while no one speaks the consequences of our uh, racial carnage. Where is the outrage voice of black America? Where and why are we mute? Why are our leaders who, um, where? So where are our leaders? Where are our legislators? Where is the church? Harry Belafonte. So I'm assuming that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, that is all a mirage. That is all a mirage to fool you, to uh, lull you into a sleep. I've said it on this show. D's have said it. Maxine Noir. We can go on and on. Uh, John Lewis. He's still talking about Martin Luther King. And, uh, you know, they keep dropping yeah. all this stuff. Right. The, we, we went to the, we, we go to NAAC meet, uh, P meetings and they talk about they haven't done nothing since 1967. I mean, so, I mean, you know, right. they, we have to, you got to come to the conclusion. You're going to have to do it for yourself. You're just going to have to. No, absolutely. But, um, regarding our black leaders and stuff, um, non-existent and, and, and churches, the problem is not them. The problem is us. We don't hold them accountable. Uh, we know that since the eight, 1980s, the black churches have raked in over $400 billion and rarely... On a prosperity a, message. On a prosperity message. And they really have nothing to show for as what they've done with the money back into the communities. Most of these churches are built in the hoods that are dilapidated. I live right around the corner from one of the um, biggest churches in the, in the empire. And you guys have seen him and his church on the pastors of LA Mm -hmm. and that church is in the hood in the hood the whole area around the church is just dilapidated it's just it's you see all it's just all the money he this dude I kid you not I've seen him in a Bentley uh, a Lamborghini Mm -hmm. a G-Wagon Mercedes another type of Mercedes and a Ferrari and this is a brother that is around in those cars this is a brother that was an ex uh, drug dealer and pimp But so the point that I'm making is we don't hold them accountable. We keep on it. And like with the black politician, all right, I'm going to believe you this time. Okay. I'm going to vote for you this time. And then they keep going to Washington, getting rich while we keep getting poor. Or, or is it the fact that black people are susceptible to somebody who has a good mouthpiece? If they can talk a good game, it's just like the hustle game. All he did was take some an illegal hustle, use his mouthpiece to pimp the congregation. So yeah, some people like him pe- uh, mm. preaching the pimping. Well, they, 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 they get their clothes from the same shop. Mm. Oh, you stop it. And Sydney says, Cy- uh, Cynthia, uh, we, uh, both were beat though by black men and never really recovered. We all need therapy. Shaking my head. Mm. Um, are you talking about Halle Berry? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's what she says. Well, then again, you know, a lot of people say Halle Berry isn't all there either. So. Oh, yeah, that's still on knees down. No, no, know. nobody deserves to be yeah. beaten, but you got to remember Halle Berry is half white. So. And it, uh, I'm sorry. Charles says, Muhammad Ali talked about those a thousand snakes. Yeah, Muhammad yeah. Ali was very awake. I actually saw something um, somebody posted today where he was like, why would you want to go into, you know, at the time it was going through the civil rights struggle, mm-hmm. Why would you want to go into somebody's restaurant and force them to serve you a milkshake mm-hmm. that they probably spit in or, or peed in? And then something or, in, yeah. you know. Why mm-hmm. would you want to do that? He said that does that's crazy. And that's then, because I marched with Martin Luther King and I did all these things with Dr. King and I did Dr. King. That's all you got to say. Marcus, you said right now the black man's manhood is in the white man's pocket. Seriously, the black yeah. man is an embarrassment. 
embarrassing to his woman and children who refuses to be embarrassed. Oh, listen, um, you said it, I did. And Donovan didn't, because I know everybody's gonna blame me. But um, but but a, a good point though. We, uh, me and D, were talking before the show started today about uh, Stefan. Uh, what's his name? Clark. Clark's brother. Stavante. Right now, Savante. St- I mean, there's a good example of, and this is what I asked Dee. I, I called her up when I saw the article and I said, do you know this guy's in jail right now? And, she, you, know, she, you know, of course, Dee knows everything. So she I said, yeah. Right. And, um, you know, now he's all remorseful and acting, hey, I'll give you, you know, all he's acting normal. He's but, like, yes, good sir. Yeah, but, you, you, <laughs> but, but, but I, I told Dee, I said, I have to question the family for letting this guy be well, the spokesperson. They actually uh, had, had no control or mm-hmm. no real influence over him or his brothers. I don't know. I but, there, but, but, but what I'm saying is when you, know, when, when you put this kind of person up on a national platform, this is what they think of us. Oh, yeah. They was going to get him anyway. Yeah. He, was a, he had a target on his back. And Sydney says, there are, there's a black-owned vegan restaurant in Harlem. Most of the customers are white, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Harlem is a white neighborhood now, so... Well, we take white dollars, you know. And Jonah <laughs> says most of us are like Uncle Ruckus from Boondocks or Steph yes. Steven from Django. Um, we are comfortable in the fire, aka hell that not that's not um, doing yeah. for self allows the white nation to serve us via our ignorance of ignorance of not supporting our own and doing for self. Um, you, we only laying at the master's bed waiting on crumbs to drop. America's trying to salvage its crumbs. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They don't even want us to have that because, you know, as I was doing some research earlier, it was saying that it's it's important to keep black people um, reminded that they ain't nothing. You ain't shit. They don't want us to ever believe that we can be equal or better than them in no way, shape or form, physically, financially. Yeah. Any of that, they they can't have, they cannot afford for us to think that because that would obviously mean their demise to some degree, and they wouldn't be what you call, you know, supreme. Yeah, everybody asks me why do I always wear my aviation stuff? Like, you know, one thing about where we live right here in Riverside is, uh, you know, we're a big old base over here. You know, a lot of uh, sack and stuff like that. So there's a lot of pilots here. So when they see me in my aviation stuff, you can see the white people just upset. Like there's no way. Yeah, he, he's and, an, and, he was and, a pilot. Yeah, yeah. And, and and then they'll come up to me and you know and they'll talk that pilot verbiage to try to catch me. <laughs> and you know and we, and we call it in the military we call it stolen valor. So yeah. it's like a language that, that 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 we speak. And when I speak the language back to them, that's when everything is kind of you know you can see that they have that. I'm sorry to say this. Excuse me if you're offended. That damn nigga, he he is the real deal. Okay, but let me ask you this: mm-hmm. um, when they come up to you to try to trip you up to see mm-hmm. if you were really a pilot, do you? Do you feel compelled to answer that, or or do you feel like in some a way that you have to validate to them that you no, are the real deal? No. I, or could you just say, "Kiss my ass"? I don't well, have to answer well, you to well, nothing. Well, I, well, I say, well, you know, I am in the military, so I got to give them the respect that 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 they're due. Mm-hmm. And most of them are probably colonels and generals or whatever. But you're not in the military no more. No, no, I'm not in the military, yeah. but but I still have to, you know, render that. You oh, know, you better I, be I, happy I, it ain't me. I, I, I've been warped to to to, to, to do that. You've but, been um, brainwashed. No, no yeah, I've, I've been brainwashed to a point, but 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 it's but it's it's more of a respect thing. I mean, because because he earned it, whatever. I got it. But uh, but here, here's what I do when, when they do that. I start asking them questions. Well, what makes you think I'm not? And I put it on them. Well, because you know you're um you're you're, you're uh you just uh uh uh, uh you yeah know. I, I, you know you don't know but I would ask some common sense questions. You think I'm going to sit in a VA office with all these military people here and wear my badges and stuff? I mean that that would be suicide because you, you that. Negro. I didn't say it. Y'all are very mm. shifty and crafty. Right, but I but I would have to be very bold to do that. Well, I mean, I guess. And then uh, Sydney says about black uh, uh, woman and black black women and black men and how mm. to fix it. Oh, what's your what's your take on it? Hold that thought. Let me uh-huh. get some questions. Don't forget that how to fix it. How to fix and black Al's, women? Uh, Jack's joke of the day: We must use our black dolls wisely. I bought a black bedroom dresser, and my son helped me put it in my room. He tried to angle it in the door. He pushed it too fast. It almost. Uh, it all it just put it too fast. It almost fell on the floor. Luckily, I caught it and told him, "Be careful! You almost made me drop my drawers." <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold that, on. That was good. Don't forget that. How to fix it? Okay, Marcus says they may have a bulletproof. I mean, I'm sorry, bulletproof. Where's my mind? A blueprint. But if you keep trying to sell it in bookstores instead of getting out and promoting it to the masses, it does not work. The people who need it to hear it are not going to read it. Um. 
I, I agree with you 100%, but those people, those being uh, Elijah Muhammad, um, uh, blah, 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 Marcus <laughs> Garvey, Farrakhan, Dr. Claude Anderson, even mm-hmm. Boyce Watkins, um, hell, I mean, I'm not anybody, but I'm talking about it on a constant basis. They are doing that, now, but you should be able to go to a book, but there's a lot of people speaking about it, but... You know, for those of you guys who read the Bible, what is it, Hosea 3 and 5, I think it is, it says, my people were destroyed for a lack of knowledge Mm -hmm. and their rejection of truth. And so I can give you the knowledge, but if you reject it, regardless Mm -hmm. of how I give it to you, if you're rejecting it, it doesn't matter. I could give it to you in the boat. I can give it to you Mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever. Green eggs and ham. I could give it to you with some, what you gonna do with it? (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) But it's like what you want. It, it's up to you to take it, right? And then Cynthia says, Chef Babette has a vegan restaurant in Inglewood called Stuff I Eat. I actually have been to Stuff I Eat and I have met Chef Babette. I have a picture with her. Okay. I was sitting in there with my daughter. I Eating ate, ribs? Is that uh, the picture it was, with it's, your ribs? No, it was no ribs. It's a vegan <laughs> restaurant. And she comes sauntering in. And I'm like, oh my God, there she is. So I asked her if I could take a picture with her. She said, sure. Very nice. Yes, yeah, she is a black-owned vegan restaurant. Stuff I eat. Excellent. And Al says, I'm talking about the incident dealing with my truck tire. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, he went and got his truck, a, a tire yesterday for his truck because he needed one. Mm-hmm. And I'm not quite sure who it was, but they gave him the tire and didn't really fill it up. And he <laughs> They have asked the job. Oh, my God. He had to go all the way back. Yeah, Houston. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. Charles says, I hate corporate slash establish, establishment uh, Democrats, organized religion, especially the damage the church has done to mm-hmm. our people. Don't get me started. I, there you brother, go. I We're know. with you, brother. We're with you. I, I agree. And then um, Al says, hey, Donovan, me and Dee went to the black community uh, community parade meeting, and I discovered they have never made good changes for years. You're talking nope. about the, yeah, uh, the black, black history, history parade. Mm-hmm. And then Charles says, uh, Lewis is a disgrace. I'm talking about John uh, Lewis. Yes, John Lewis. And then the market says, they kill our kids. Black men uh, do nothing. Our kids kill each other. Black men do nothing. We have massive kids with fathers outside of homes with mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah, we praise the black man when... Uh, let's see. We praise the black... Uh, black man, when the conversation needs to be black man, what are you going to do to take back your neighborhood, your man? I Amen. absolutely agree. And to that point, not to put you on the spot, yeah, put me not on just spot. you, but a lot of people do blame the black woman. And so... Back in the day, I wasn't there, but there was a time where we rarely called the police mm-hmm. in our neighborhoods because we dealt with it. Right. You had somebody who was wayward and doing the heinous mm-hmm. stuff. The men got together and said, okay, this is what we're going to do to well, home exactly. or back, such and such. Yeah, back in the day, you couldn't walk into somebody's neighborhood. Somebody was going to check you. Right. Now, men had, not all men, but mm-hmm. they hide behind the curtains and the confines of their living room talking about, oh, I see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I ain't going out there, though. Mm-hmm. You know. So, um, you know, and but again, where, where did they learn that stuff? The, the absentee of the father in the home. And when women willingly accepted the fact that I can get a Section 8 home, but you got to keep the father out, that, that's a problem. But, but it takes two. I'm not oh, blaming yeah. all the women. It takes two. Right. It's a consorted effort. Yeah. And, and uh, Alex says, not to be off track, but um, hey, Donovan, have you ever saw the old school 80s movie Bad Boys with Sean Penn? Oh, my God. That, he should have won an Oscar for that movie. He should have won an Oscar at that young age. That was a classic movie. As a matter of fact, I got it on D. I'm going to watch it again tonight. Well, Damn. That, that movie was powerful. Very powerful. Samuel says, we must take our children out of the enemy schools where they are put in fear of us to depend on God while we are uh, babies. Each year they kill that knowledge of God in us gradually. Let's see. Um, by that, the, uh, let's see, by the time. Do, 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 do. By the time we graduate, we are thoroughly indoctrinated in white supremacy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is another thing. We do need to start educating our own babies. Point blank. In the story, we can no longer keep sending our children to these institutions that um, teach us what they want us to know while watering down what we need who we to are. know. I mean, they don't even give us the stuff we need to know about ourselves. Well, we may, and we shouldn't be dependent on them to do well, that. Well, wh- where is the outrage to these kids walking out of school, black kids walking out of school for uh, gun violence? That's bull crap. Th- those kids should have been in school, has nothing to do with us. You know, but, but our parents are letting them walk for that. But when you let the black kid get killed, you don't see them letting their kids go out and support and that. Because we have, like um, Jonell said, we uh, have this false ideology of the inclusion, um, uh, illusion, illusion of, of inclusion. inclusion. Well, if I'm walking with them, they'll walk with me and no, they'll just no, let me more. They, they, they will never do that. Jonell says the white nation is still 
um, still deals with us as the product and still invest, invest. Mm -hmm. Think about that word, invest. Invest in us as black nation, remaining degraded, deprived, and ignorant on all levels. We've been in a struggle for our elevation and mental liberation since the slave ships uh, uh, present to present time. Absolutely. And so now is the time we have to move past that some way. You somehow. know what? Every time he says something, I get depressed. Why? Because you think you're going to go to jail? No, no, no. He's going to go to jail? No, no. I get depressed because it's so real. Like, oh. damn, we ain't got a chance. But you know again, I mean? you so. know, but to his point, there are all these blueprints right. out there. It's just that we are rejecting them. Right. Where we're, you know, Farrakhan says, invest, I think it's a nickel a week or something. Mm-hmm. Everybody invest a nickel a week. Can't oh, well, what's he going to do with well, our money? Well, well, yeah, well, it's a nickel. Well, let me ask you this. And I don't mean that, you know, like I said, I'm not a... Uh, a bash or anything like that, but I, I remember at one time the Nation of Islam had their, uh, cleaners, they had bakeries, they had all this stuff. What happened? Oh, well, they still do have those things. But I'm talking about they used to have a massive chain. What they, happened? I would say um, for the most part they do have those things. You just don't hear about those things. Mm-hmm. They, uh, people and as, and a lot of times it's us as black people want. Uh, we try to do a hatchet job on the Nation of Islam mm-hmm. and, and Farcom by saying, "Oh, what are they doing for black people?" But it's right. like. You're so ignorant to what you you are you you would rather make an ignorance not you but you rather yeah. make an ignorant statement and say well um Farcon ain't doing nothing for nobody go Google the shit it's on well, Google well yeah exactly you but, can prove the shit but, but, I mean but, but, I'm cussing I'm but, sorry. But, but 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 this is why I, I I brought that up because a lot of people think that nations ain't doing nothing and I was like right. they, yeah they used to have a bunch of them right it's you know maybe smaller they had to you know reconsolidate like any business you've got to consolidate or whatever. And um, and they've gone through some indoctrinations in the nation itself. Yeah, but you so know, the, uh, these businesses still exist, right? And then so Marcus says, listening to Al Jackson comments show that in serious situations we find the joke, which makes us the joke. Well, um, sometimes you got to laugh to keep from crying. crying. Mm-hmm. Um, but that something like that will never make us a joke. Somebody making a joke will not make us a joke. What's going to make us a joke is our inability to unite Night. and practice group mm-hmm. economics and to. Love ourselves ultimately. That's what's going to make us the joke. Mm-hmm. What's going to make us the joke is um, waiting for somebody else to give us civil rights instead of just giving it to ourselves. Right. Um, how to fix it? Oh, okay. One more. Let me get. Let me get to all these comments. Just about. Don't forget. So Samuel says a white school team by remote control. Black is no better. And then Marcus says like uh, uh, like lack of knowledge has always been our problem. But corner the person who. Want won't read and make him listen. Mm. <laughs> Dr. King went to the people, um, whether it was the church, workplace, streets. Uh, some things um, have to be said for free and not for profit. Well, I watch all of that stuff on YouTube mm-hmm. for free. Now, obviously, right. I pay for the internet. Right. And Dr. King only went where he was paid to go. And and that some people say that also. This is another thing, Marcus. I want to um, give a little bit of pushback. Just because a person is giving you something, information don't mean it's the right information. Mm-hmm. Right before Martin Luther Bell. King died, uh, that's the dog, right before Martin Luther King was murdered, rather, he said, I fear that I've led my people into a burning building. So the message, to your point, that he was going to schools and churches and stuff for free was not the right message he should have been giving black yeah. people. So yeah. I, that, that's just really I have to say about that. And uh, Marcus says, black kids walking out of school is our kids doing what the, their parents want to do. I, I never uh, mad at what or I'm never mad at what our kids do because it falls on adults who mm-hmm. do agree who don't do stuff. Yeah, I agree. And Al says, since you don't laugh, baby, here's another joke of the day. Lord have mercy. The black pig goes into Starbucks <laughs> or the five cups of coffee and drinks them all. The white latte manager asks, would you like to use our restroom? The pig says, hell no. Don't you know what I am? The little piggy that goes wee 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 all the way home. Lord have mercy. <laughs> um, Cindy, we will be institutionalized by the eighth grade. Absolutely. And then you say, mm-hmm. D cursing. I'm shocked, man. <laughs> now, don't talk about the nation. She, she about to look. She, she got a razor down by her foot. <laughs> no, I, I, I really try not, not to curse. I'm lying. I don't try. I try not to do it uh, in, uh, well, as my mom would say, mixed company. Yes, mixed company. And then one more comment, and we're going to get to that. Oh, go ahead. Because uh, I was Your trying show. to catch up. Uh, Donna, I, Cindy says, I never forget this. My third grade teacher says she was fired because she was not supposed to teach us. She was supposed to indoctrinate us. Absolutely, mm-hmm. she was right. And a lot of liberals have indoct- indoctrinated a lot Don't teach of teach them uh, how to think, teach them what to think. Uh-huh. Says, uh, Samuel says, do we actually expect our enemy, oops, our enemy to advertise what the NOI does exactly. It was actually easier in the past when we knew um, who the enemy was among us. Now, mm-hmm. Cointel Pro can focus, um, let's see, all their ages in 
the last organization standing, um, sure. the NOI. So basically, say I think what you're saying, um, they're, they they've tried to infiltrate. Obviously, it's not been successful. I, I would say that too. The nation is really good at screening. Yeah, people. now because Farcon made a mm-hmm. good point. He says in black churches, and he specifically was talking about the church in Charlotte where the um, Dylan Roof went there and shot up mm-hmm. nine people. He says uh, black churches, you know. Uh, if a black man comes in there, it's, you know, maybe with a, if a black man would have came in there with a backpack and looking questionable, never been there, or who you who you yeah. here to see, yeah. what you doing? They, the deacons would have never took their eye off of them. Mm-hmm. But a white man comes in there with a backpack, have a seat, have have a seat. seat. they put him in the back, right, right, put them in the back, turn their back on them, and went on about the business, and he killed them. So it's like, yeah. You're not gonna really hear about that. I'm telling you, you go to a, uh, um, to the mm. mosque right now, and you're gonna get the pat down, brother. Oh well, okay. well I got the pat down and the and the uh, foot in the ass that they told me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Marcus says, "How do we know all these things?" King did. Where is the proof he was paid? Where is the proof he was an alien? Where is the proof? Okay, okay, brother. okay. Wait, wait, about- wait. I'm going to say something real quick. Hold on. Before you break him down, um, I have one question. Yeah. How does the King family get their wealth? He had a trust fund. But where did where, but where did the know. money where did the money from the trust fund come? The, the King family they say is estimated uh, wealth is over sixteen million dollars. Damn, and where, he didn't. He, uh, as far as I know, he didn't have that much money. He when didn't he have that much money. So where did that money come from? Well, they do the bidding of uh, the left wing and maybe some on the right. I have seen where I think it was um, his son, the third, was um, agreeing with something Trump said. Yes, as a matter of so, fact, he met with Trump. Exactly. So, um, so where is the proof? Well. Um, you might not have been on this show when I have talked about it, but Martin Luther King, the Martin Luther the King mm-hmm. Jr., he I, Google it if you don't believe me. Mm-hmm. He said that one of his most prized possessions was yes. the award that was given to him Nobel by Peace Margaret Prize. Sanger, who was the, one of the authors of the eugenics program that believed in exterminating black people because. Black people were a burden on society and were not fit to be amongst white people or anybody else. Society. And so mm-hmm. she said 30 years before he got the award, we need to find a black preacher who has the ear of the community and who is very influential and who can sell our message. Right. 30 years later, now this is all facts. It's not facts. something I'm making up. Mm-hmm. 30 years later, he received the award. Well, actually, his wife received the award. But he sent a handwritten letter that you can Google thanking Margaret Sanger and considered that to be one of his most prized possessions. And so when you say, how do I know Mm -hmm. that Martin Luther King was paid? Where is the proof? I didn't see a bank statement per se, but I know those were his words and those were facts that can be proven. And so to me, I didn't even have to dig that deep to find those things. And so one thing that I try not to do, Marcus, is get on here and inflate um, facts yeah. or lie about things because I know that you guys aren't stupid. Mm-hmm. I know you guys can Google things that I say. Mm-hmm. So I, I get where you're going. Are we all. I'm not saying Martin Luther King was a horrible person, no, but Martin horrible. Luther King, out of his own mouth, said that he made a, a mistake. He was going to Washington to ask for reparations for his people, and he was gone because he got off. Message. message. Mm-hmm. Whose message was he on? Was it his message or was it the agenda of the white man? Right. We know who that was. Keep those Negroes docile. Right. Let them believe they can give them a few give things. Give them a few things, but don't let them mm-hmm. get off, you know, talking about and, getting something. And, and, then, and then if you don't believe it, you know, and I know people always say that, you know, where's the proof of the money and right. stuff? Okay. Forget the money. It's the same thing with what we got with President Trump right now. Why doesn't he want to show us taxes? Because he's not a billionaire. Now, uh, taxes are public record. King has been dead for almost 50 years now, whatever the deal is. Why won't they release his taxes in the time that Trump? he was in the civil rights? No, King. Oh, King. You cannot get his tax records. And the tax records will show you where the money, where came, the money from. came from. Right. I mean, I, I don't think that's a hard uh, yeah. um, line to follow. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so... Uh, because Janelle, what's the big secret? Right. Well, we know what the big secret yeah. is. Uh, uh, and Jonelle said it's the fact that... Uh, it's the fact, I think, Donovan... That is going to take a great devastating event on both sides, white and black, to break um, out from uh, uh, break off from the beast of America. We, the nation of Islam, is only as great as uh, only as great as our people's support. So we 
are all in this struggle, but Absolutely. we do have farms and constantly working to establish, um, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, does where the uh, there's no vision of people parents. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, again, to your point, to my point, there are blueprints, there are visions, but people are not... People, oops, I got off of the doggone live feed. No, you did. Yes, I did. I did. Oh, well, oops. People, uh, well, <laughs> well, 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 people are still Wait, listening. Hold on. I'm, but, on um, I'm sorry. But um, hold on. Regardless of that, uh, my <laughs> my future father in law. I, I love all those comments. Can you do me a favor and go on yours and see if you can get the comments? I don't. I think so. I, I, um, you can see them. I think on my feed. Yeah, hold on. You're on live right now. Am I still on? Mm-hmm. I don't know how. Wait, I want to say hello. Wait, I want to say hello. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yep, you're off just now. Yep, you just went off. Oops. Oh. Uh, ah. Uh, can you read those comments back? I can't. Let me see. I left my other phone in the, um, in the thing. I can read them back. I gotta uh, go to your thing. Uh, go to yours. Let's see. Or, yeah, go to my live feed and see if. Uh, uh, sorry about that, you guys. Um. Okay, here it is. There we go. Let me see. <clears throat> uh, my apologies. I was trying. I saw something nope, coming. It's all gone. I'm sorry about that. You no, guys. no. Let me go. Let me see your phone. Um, so I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna try to get you guys' comments back. Um, I saw something pop up on my screen, and I was trying to get rid of it. So uh, my that's apologies. why I don't mess with my phone. I, I, my apologies. I'm gonna let you get, go back to you guys' comments. I apologize but, but, for that. But, but since you're trying to figure it out, how to fix it. Now, what am I trying to how to fix? Okay, so you're gonna how to fix uh, women, black men and women. Black men and women. Well, number one, we have to start teaching our young people about relationships and and their roles in those relationships. We have to stop giving our, especially our low esteem black children, low self esteem. We're giving that when mom mama doesn't wear her hair, because if if they see mama not wearing her natural hair, what do you think they think about their hair? They're giving this woman. Low self-esteem. When they when they see mama not married, they have no ambitions of being married. Uh, vice versa with, with the son. Uh, when the son sees mama bringing in this guy, that guy, this guy, how do you think he's going to treat women? And how you know his expectation of women? Women have to stop treating the son as if that's her man. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we can do. We, you know, we we need to get back to the to common core sense of uh, family and raising them correctly, whatever that is, because not everybody's version of that is the same. It's going to be the same, but the core of it should be uh, mother, father, children. Not There's something wrong when grandma has a boyfriend. There's something wrong with that. Grandma can't have a boyfriend? Well, the thing is, when it's, when it's a common thing, when, when I hear um, somebody says, oh, well, grandma's boyfriend coming over. What? You know what I mean? When you were coming up, did, did, you know, I didn't yeah, hear that a lot. grandma had a boyfriend. No, no, but I, you didn't hear it a lot. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Based on the situation. So we have to get back to our common sense of uh, the family core and what the, you know, what the, what's the importance of being married? I say it all the time. There are legal ramifications and pluses to being married. Okay. I got you. And but, I got you guys' comments here, too, from the last and, one. So, right. So hold on. I, I got you guys. So, so you know, we have to get back to that and, and show that because when, when people don't put value on marriage, marriage is a good thing. Right. You know, it, it really is. But for some reason, these young people think, oh, I'll just have a baby over here, baby over there for young black men. And I'm going to speak as a, a, a an old black man. I tell my boys all the time it is catastrophic to deal with one woman. You know, with the child for you. Right. You, you're dealing with two and three with the way the system is today. We have to get back to, you know, telling them the real story. Okay. This ain't no joke. This ain't real. You, you, you're looking at financial ruin when you are outside of that marriage. But when you're married. Unfortunately, marriages don't always work out, but however, the courts will abide. It makes it easier for the courts to abide by what needs to be done. Okay. And it's harder when you're married to just walk away from the relationship. Right. Because you're tethered to that person. Okay. So that's what we need to get back to. So I got you guys' questions again. I apologize for that. Uh, I saw something come across the screen. I tried to get rid of it, and somehow it, it got rid of my live feed. Sorry. And so, Sydney, you say, here's the question. Why... Uh, uh, why are so many of us in the South so docile? Um, I believe it's just part of the conditioning of the South after slavery, um, which was where slavery was prevalent. Uh, 
the powers that be, they indoctrinated black people, uh, actually indoctrinated them in with fear. And so I think that has just lingered on. That's just a lingering effect of what was uh, had taken place uh, through Jim Crow and uh, you know Reconstruction and all of that. And Al says, what would help Marcus if he can't laugh and have a good attitude in any situation? Talk to me and I can help. <laughs> Sydney says Martin Luther King's niece is a Republican. She is an outcast.